Hello everyone, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Anglegeist. Um, this is the all, uh, for that little laugh, sorry, this is a reading for all signs. It is your weekly Sunday reading. It is for Sunday the 12th through Saturday the 18th of June. We do have the full moon in Sagittarius falling on Tuesday the 14th. Keep that in mind. Full moons are for releasing. This is, um, a broad spectrum reading that is intended for the collective, so you guys all share it, however you experience it in your life. Each card is going to represent for a day or two, um, maybe three, um, during the week. And as I go through the week and continue to do readings, those cards will layer on top of these energies that we see, right? So it's sort of like a, just a forecast, a collective forecast as to what could be going on for us during this week what we could be dealing with. You need to figure out where it best fits in your life, if at all. Um, if what I'm talking about pertains to the situation you're dealing with, more specifically something that you have in your mind or that you're feeling, certainly feel free to utilize the reading to support you and validate you and your feelings or thoughts or intuitions. But always uh, um, keep in mind that you're 100% responsible for making your own decisions in your life, right? We don't want this channel to anybody's free will or making the decisions for them. If you're new to me, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the notification bell. I do put up daily content, so uh, there's a reading every day. Um, and as my viewership grows, hopefully it will, um, as it grows, I may go back to doing uh, monthly uh, taroscopes for everybody. But with such a small audience, it's just, uh, it's too much at this time. So, um... Please share the video out. Uh, like I said, hit that thumbs up button. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a question or comment. All that stuff is a great way of uh, supporting the channel. Also, check out the drop down menu under any of my daily videos. In there, house rules as to what decks I'm using, how to get in contact with me for, with me for a private reading, how to follow me on social media. Not that I'm a big social media person, but you can follow me. And, um, also, just things I want you to think about while utilizing my channel. All right, so let's get into this and look at these cards and see what's going on. Oh, one other thing. Don't get caught up on the date of this reading. So if you're watching this and it's not in June or it's, you know, some other year or whatever, but yet the reading has popped up in your feed randomly, just watch it. The message makes sense to a certain area of your life, even though it's from a totally different time frame. Go with it. Spirit has a way of getting us the messages when we need them, or our own higher self brings us to the message, um, you know, just when we need it rather than when it was created for us. So don't get caught up in the date, guys. My readings are very flexible, as is spirit, you know, and we have spirit, each and every one of us within us. So remember that we have that aspect to ourselves. All right, so let's see what these cards want to say. I'm really like, I woke up this morning tired. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. Okay, Ace of Cups, I'll take it. Really nice way to begin the week, right? Nice big old cup of coffee with a heart on it. <laughs> Who doesn't love a heart on? Um, uh, to me, the Ace of Cups is about, it can oftentimes represent new love, certainly new, uh, a new wellspring of emotions, right? Positive emotions generally as a rule. Aces are always positive and welcome. They, um, Cups just deals with the element of water, which would be the emotions, right? This could be a new um, turnover for us emotionally, how we're feeling about a situation, looking at things more positively in our own life, right? Different areas of our own life. This cup of coffee, even though it's sweet and everything, it makes me think of the, like the word energy pops into my mind because, you know, we drink coffee to wake up or get energy to get the day accomplished, to get things done. And I feel like this this here to me, plus that pink ribbon is very much heart-centered energy or fourth chakra energy, like the pink ribbon across the top of the card. It makes me feel like this the beginning of this week, we should feel inspired. We should feel, and I'm emotionally so, right? From the depths of our emotions, inspired, energized, and ready to like tackle new things, right? The newness is the ace aspect of it all. There could be a renewal for us emotionally. Now, each one of you may experience this renewal differently right? Around a different area of your life. Maybe it's, you know, the job that you hated, all of a sudden you find inspiration or joy in it again, or you find a new job altogether that brings you inspiration and joy that you feel more emotionally connected to. Now you can replace job with boyfriend <laughs> or husband for that matter, 
right? Like maybe you in your your relationship, whatever, whoever it may be with your husband, girlfriend, wife, partner, sister, brother, mother has been stale, right? Not feeling quite connected. This Ace of Cups says, okay, there's a renewal to come. There's something new to like um, re-energize us, reconnect us in some way, shape or form that feels palpable, real, exciting, inspiring, awesome. I'm having my little Ace of Cups coffee sip there. But ideally, we want to ride this energy and take it into the week, you know, inspiring us, bringing us um, good feelings, um, opportunity, focusing on where the opportunities are or where they appear or pop up in our life, right? And acknowledging them and having gratitude for them. That's definitely the Ace of Cups energy. Don't be surprised if it's an unexpected positive opportunities show up like this could be you know uh reconnecting with old friends or uh like i said deepening of relationships this could even be I, technically pentacles is more about money but i don't know why but i'm sort of flashing on maybe there's an influx of money coming your way like something surprising and positive that like lifts our emotional vibration is to appear this week that's just the vibe that i'm getting from this card and what i feel like i want to say now each one of you is going to have that emotional uplift excuse me, in a different way. Be open and prepared to experience it. Um, be open and ready to experience it and drink it down. Like just like it, as delicious as this cup of coffee looks, like suck it down into your soul. <laughs> it's kind of my feeling. And the emotions certainly have a much more closer soul connection and, and more information as to where our soul is truly at than, you know, say the mental realm or even sometimes the physical realm. I feel like the physical body is the last manifestor or last manifestation of what's actually going on internally, right? It's the most densest form of who we are. And so it hits last. That's why like sort of disease surfaces in our life after, you know, years of stress and, 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 what, and worry, right? So to me, what I feel like is, is soak this in, enjoy it, look for the positives, look for um, the new opportunities that exist around you and connect to them, like connect to them from this heart-centered, this appreciative, compassionate sort of way, okay? I think that makes sense. So let's go to the next card. All right, Seven of Pentacles, I'll take it. We have... Um, uh, um, oh, Jesus, I'm so tired, guys. We have water in the Ace of Cups, right? Pentacles is the complementary energy of Earth, right? And I was just talking about how Earth energy or the body is like the most sort of dense form of um, us, like sort of molecularly. I'm by no means a scientist, but anyways, here in the Ace of or the Seven of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles is to me kind of about like a job well well done, right? It's sort of like a review, a time to pause in the midweek and reflect back on what we've done thus far. What have we worked for? How have we worked? The work that we put in and how has that grown certain situations, right? The way that I love that they depict this is that this vine has grown around the actual tool that we've used to work, um, right? That shovel that's in the ground and it's created this like sort of pinnacle bush in a way that is going to give us harvest or that we will reap the rewards of through dedication, time, attention, um, even like I was saying with the Ace of Cups, gratitude. Gratitude is huge when it comes to um, uh, being able to see, you know, sort of uh, the opportunity in our life and to, to build upon it and to see more. With the Seven of Pentacles, though, the Seven of Pentacles is not necessarily an action card. I do want to say that. I feel like the Ace of Cups, I'm just going to, this is my own personal interpretation. The Ace of Cups is something that not, like that in either happens to us or awakens within us, correct? You got that? I think so. The Seven of Pentacles would be about pausing and reflecting back, looking at where we've been working, what we've been doing, and the growth that we have actually manifested, produced, and achieved in the process right? That's this plant growing around, say, the hard work of the shovel, right? 
The shovel is firmly planted in the ground. Pentacles is always a more grounded suit than any of the other suits, right? It's more connected to the earth, to the physicality, to the reality, to the money, to the career, that sort of a thing. But this doesn't necessarily have to be just money or career related. This can be about reaping the benefits of the work that we've done wherever in our lives, guys, because each one of you has been putting in work somewhere. And now is the time to pause, look at the work we've put in and honor and acknowledge that aspect of whatever that work is. Now is, uh, with the seven of uh, pentacles, I always, the question to me is, is, is now the time to harvest, right? In a traditional rider weight tarot, there's a gentleman like leaning on a, on a hoe or, and not that kind of hoe, her name's not Rhonda, but leaning on a, um, a gardening tool, like this shovel, looking at his crop in reflection, thinking about the work, the time, the energy, the effort, and then making a, like, the sevens also, the energy of a seven is about making a conscious choice, right, to move towards the energy of the eight, which is more in balance, right? So the seven offers this kind of transition period of, is now the right time? right? It's not to say that we haven't been putting in the right work. That's definitely the case with the Seven of Pentacles around whatever situation we're looking at. But is now the right time to make any changes? Is now the right time to, you know, uh, begin to bring in the harvest, whatever that harvest may be. And when I say harvest, I'm talking metaphorically, guys. So I don't expect to find you guys out in fields picking grapes. What I'm talking about is, is now the time where we capitalize or or really honor the relationships we've built or the career choices we've made? Um, is now the time to ask for that promotion or that raise? These are questions you wanna ask yourself. The answer may indeed be yes with that Ace of, Pen Ace of Cups in the beginning of the week, but we wanna be sure. So there's a little bit of reflection in the midweek. We don't wanna to move too fast. Pentacles kind of slows us down a little bit in a good way, especially with the seven. The seven is about contemplation. And then once we've contemplated it, We've looked at it for the whole in, in its totality. We've probably found a better appreciation of the work that we have done. Therefore, we can make a more informed and better decision about what next steps to take. Does that make sense? So let's look at the end of the week. And the end of the week, speaking of taking steps, is the chariot. I'm not mad at this card either. This is card number seven of the Major Arcana. So we're talking about a big ending to the week. Uh, chariot is often uh, uh, associated with the sign of Cancer, which is quite nurturing, quite watery, similar to the um, Ace of Cups in the beginning of the week. But it's like, when I look at this, to be honest, it feels like we're settling into something very much or being inspired by something emotionally, coming to terms, renewal, acceptance, um, even agreement to something emotionally in the beginning of the week, then reflecting back upon whatever it is we've been working on and seeing the physical sort of growth there, manifestation, uh, effort or endeavor, and appreciating and then at some point, figuring out when and what our next step is to take. And that is the chariot. The chariot, those two horses, we've got dark and white, like a uh, dark and light horse, right? We've got white and black horse. We've got the sun in front of them or above them. The sun is always a positive omen. It's always energy, life-giving um, uh, aspect to it, right? The sun is not necessarily associated with the chariot card per se, but the fact that it's in this particular chariot card, I think is important because to me, it looks like, in a couple of different ways I can determine this, it looks like the path is being very well lit for us. It's time to move forward. These two horses are ready to go. And I'm just reading it a little bit because of the demureness of that white horse there. She looks a little bit more feminine to me, where the darker horse looks a little bit more determined and masculine. So we have this nice balance of polarities going on between the light and the dark, the good and the bad, the, the weak and the strong, the frail and the you know assertive. Um, it's like this sort of complete acceptance because we have the sun shining down on these two horses of maybe who we are, what we want, how we feel, and what the hell we're going to do to get there. Does that make sense? Chariot is always about forward movement, making a move, taking action. Um, generally, because it's associated with the sign of cancer, I associate it with um, taking action from a place of uh, emotional um, choice, right? And that choice is generally, in my opinion, because cancer is such a nurturing sign, it's from a good, um, uh, uh, like, compassionate place, right? A place of 
of um, our own well-being or the well-being of those around us, right? So we begin to move forward at the end of this week in a very positive way with our path lit, our, um, our polarities in balance. That's this white horse, black horse thing, right? They're in balance. They're in support of one another. They each bring, you know, all aspects of who we are, what we are, our, our strengths and our weaknesses are working for us and together, and we should be in acceptance of them with the sun above us, right? Shining a light directly down on them. We're not ashamed of them. We're not like, you know, letting them stop us or get in our way. We're actually allowing them to both do their job so that they can move forward or that we can move forward in our life towards what it is that we want. Does that make sense? Now, with the Ace of Cups and the Seven of Pentacles in the early part of the week, this feels... um somewhat fortuitous, right? Like we're ready. This is like, that's kind of like what I'm hearing in my head is this sort of idea of like emotionally, I'm certainly ready and excited by that Ace of Cups. But then physically or, you know, materially, I'm also, I wouldn't say ready, but I'm certainly at the table, reflecting upon everything, looking at everything, weighing everything, um, assessing everything from a, a discerning, grounded place, and then making the right decisions to get back into that emotional state or into that clarity and then move forward with this chariot with a sense of awareness, nurturing, um, what's the word, clarity even, because I feel like these horses will not be denied. That's kind of the energy of the chariot. The chariot's like a a boom flash towards, you know, whatever our goal is. The, sometimes if, if I ever see the chariot as a, like, sort of a negative, sometimes I can feel like the chariot can get a little bit moving too quickly for our, for our own good. I don't feel that with this reading, though. This reading feels very balanced and ready to go. But, like, for those of you that might fear the chariot or be like, wait, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I need more Seven of Pentacles, I want to reflect more, choose to do that, that's fine. You can. Sometimes the chariot can come on quickly and move so quickly that we feel like for the control freaks in the room, like you can't see me raising my hand, but for those of you that are control freaks, the chariot can sometimes seem scary because it's sort of like we're being moved forward, even maybe sometimes not against our will, but by the environment, the situations. And it's usually a positive move forward, but it's like, we're like, wait, can we slow this down? <laughs> And I have more control over how this goes. I don't feel like this chariot feels out of control because of that seven of pentacles in the midweek. It feels to me quite inspired, right? So I'm excited for you all, however you experience this energy in whatever area of your life. Be prepared for great things to sort of happen this week. You know, um, be excited for the opportunities, the work that you've done, and honor that within you right? Emotionally, that's kind of also the key with these cards. I like that it is um, cup and then ch uh, chariot at the ends so where we have this nice pentacles card of reflection and choice in the center of the week that is buffeted by these beautiful emotional cards of um, renewal. And then, you know, oftentimes, even though the chariot is an emotional card because it's associated with the sign of cancer, it represents like this course of action that's being taken or this course of movement that's taking place. Oftentimes, um, uh, uh, like uh, instigated through emotion, through one's own nurturing, through one's own um, need for well-being. So I'm, I'm good with this reading. I think that this is a great week for you guys. Let's look to the animal spirit animal oracle. Oh, get it. Speaking of light and dark horses, we've got horse spirit. Freedom is yours. Card number 33, guys. A mastery number. This is going to be a bang on week. Uh, first off, I'm just digging this Anna Nicole, ha wind in the hair, soft pink realness. I'm giving you Sarah Jessica Parker at the impromptu model shoot in, in, in Mauve. Like, I love it. There's a freedom here in this card. She's gorgeous. I also, I want to say this too. She's pink, like this pink ribbon here. We've got two horses represented here. She has a little bit of the light, a little bit of the dark. She's a mixture of everything. And she's card number 33, which is a master number. We don't boil down 11, 22, or 33. So horse spirit. And this is the thing about horses too. I used to 
well, I had this job where I used to have to drive by this field of horses all the time. So I would bring them apples and I would feed them. And when you look into a horse's eyes, it's the most peace. I, maybe it's just me. I get the most peaceful feeling. Yes, it's a little bit scary because they're such powerful animals, right? They could just trample you to death if they wanted to. But when you really truly look into a horse's eyes, there's a sense of, or at least within me, I get this sense of like reverence, respect, um, because they're such like, I don't know, beautiful and noble creatures, right? They have such a significant impact on like human evolution as far as animals are concerned. I mean, a lot of animals have an impact on human evolution um, just in how they've helped us to achieve, you know, the industrialized world that we have now because before there was, you know, machines and all of that. We were carting everything around via horse and mule and you know, eating the animals and whatever. So anyways, that's a whole nother diatribe. Where am I going with that? But I love this. Freedom is yours. Uh, freedom is yours at the end of the week. <laughs> Let's just say that. Because that chariot looks like they're heading at the end of the week. But we get a little bit of an inspiration and emotional freedom in the beginning of the week through that Ace of Cups, guys. So keep that in mind. Again, the pinkness of this beautiful horse spirit to me is also giving me that pink ribbon in the in the in the Ace of Cups. This is going to be a fucking bang on week is my feeling. And I'm excited for each and every one of you. And to be honest, I hope that I experience some of this too. Um, granted, I am part of the collective, so maybe I will have some of it in my world. I try and take myself sort of out of the reading or separate myself so that it's not um, too much directed towards my life. But you know what? In this reading, I'll take it. So... 33, horse spirit, freedom is yours. Oracle message, when horse spirit appears, you are gifted with the spirit of movement and freedom. It is time for travel and adventure, whether that means a trip somewhere or taking a different type of journey. One of freedom of choice. Horse spirit reminds you that no matter the circumstances, you have free will and choices that can take you far away to a better place, a better situation, a better state of being, for there is no one but you to reign in your will to make a different decision. That decision-making is that seven of pentacles, guys. Um, you are capable of making powerful choices that will affect you for a long time to come. Horses are social animals and known to be a friend to mankind, willing to carry us forward when we need it. Horse spirit reminds you that help will be available to you whenever you need it. And companions, oh, it's now 6 a.m. trying to get up. Um, I've been up for hours. Uh, horse spirit reminds you that help will be available to you whenever you need it and companions will be by your side whenever you choose to go, whatever direction you choose to travel. That choice, guys, is that seven of pentacles. The travel is the chariot at the end of the week. Life is an adventure and horse spirit wants you to know that whatever choice, choices you make, you have great spirit within, invisible yet holding you up and always walking by your side. Now, that could be the Ace of Cups at the beginning of the week. If your inquiry is about a relationship, you can set your heart free to experience love in all forms. Spirit whispers to you that the gift of freedom is yours if you allow yourself to break out of your perfectionism and stubbornness. Make a move and enjoy the freedom of letting go of the need to control. The protection message is, are you feeling stuck? Has your spirit been broken by challenges you have faced? Your current choices may not seem the best, but you are not seeing the clearing ahead where you can break free and run. Whatever your choice is right now, they can lead you to exhilarating freedom. So trust the guidance of spirit. Horse spirit is here to tell you that adventure calls and you will soon realize your power is greater than you think. Perhaps your frustration and feelings of being fenced in are the result of being too much in your on your high horse, quote unquote. If unwilling to come down to earth and join the herd that wants to support you. Being in control and in charge can be overrated. It's time to loosen up, drop the reins, let go, and prance with others just for the fun of it. Okay, prance. I'm all for a good prance. Let's go to the drowning stone. Now, this is something that we want to um, ground in throughout this week, okay? And it's the smallest stone in the bag. And every time that it comes across my hand when I'm shifting, like shuffling the stones in the bag, like moving them around, 
I know I recognize this stone because it is literally the smallest stone in the entire bag. And there's probably like 30 or 40 stones in this bag. This is on carnelian, which is associated with our root chakra, which I'm not mad about because this means ground, ground, ground in it. But also the red of it has energy to it, right? It gives it a little bit of an oomph, a little bit of a charge, a little bit of an inspiration like I was feeling in the beginning of the week with that Ace of Cups, right? That, um, that excitement, that charge. The word is give. Now, to ground in the idea of give is sort of like this idea of... Um, a couple of different things pop into my mind. First off, when we're in a state of giving, we're open, right? When we're when we're in a state of giving, and this, and first and foremost, we should always be willing to give to ourselves, emotionally, mentally, materially. You know, like mentally and materially, in that Seven of Pentacles is us taking the time to stop, pause, ground, and and reflect. That's giving to ourselves in essence, right? To make a the next like right or informed decision. I don't even want to get caught in right or wrong because with the polarity of the light horse and the dark horse in the chariot, it doesn't matter if we're right or wrong. What matters is we do the reflection, we feel the connection, and then we make the choice towards freedom. That's what matters. And we give that to ourselves, right? That's the whole idea of grounding in this idea of giving, right? In this, in this principle of generosity. But here's the, here's another caveat to that. It's not even a caveat, but something I want to add on in addition to that is this idea of give is when we're able to give to others or even to ourselves, first and foremost, I always want these readings to be focused on the self. So when we're willing to give ourselves the opportunity to connect and make decisions and reflect and obtain or pursue our own personal freedom, wherever that may be for us, whether it's freedom in a job, freedom in a relationship, freedom in life, right? That joy, that higher spiritual um, awareness, that's the number 33 in horse spirit. We're also able to allow the universe, the environment, others around us, situations around us to give back to us because we're in that vibration. Does that make sense? It's similar to like being receptive and then, you know, other situations can also be receptive to us. But when we're being generous within ourselves, to ourselves, kind to ourselves, loving to ourselves, we're able to also see that love mirror back to us from situations outside of ourselves. And we can also reap that benefit. It's not like we do it so we can reap the benefit, but it sort of compounds and builds upon itself and it allows us to see the joy in our lives. That's that ace of cups. That's the freedom is yours in horse spirit, right? So when we're grounding in that idea of giving to ourselves and then, you know, making ourselves more complete, more whole and making decisions that uh, enable us to pursue our own freedoms, we find that our freedom can come to us more easily. The joys can come to us more easily. The compassion can come to us more easily. It can come trotting in like this horse in support, right? The rest of our herd will show up, you know, in support of us in this state. Does that make sense? So keeping that idea of openness, giving first to oneself and being in appreciation of that allows us to then open up the doors to being able to give to others and to receive from them as they give to us and to be in appreciation and gratitude for the gifts that are being exchanged. Does that make sense? So it's a sense of feeling far more connected to everything that's going on around us and inspired by it. All right, guys, that is your reading for the day. Thank you so much for the week. I mean, thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow as we build upon this energy. It'll be interesting to see what cards come out this week, as I think it's going to be a pretty fantastic week. Please like, share, comment, sub subscribe. Um, help me get my name out there. I would greatly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.